Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. Second part to this video on a detached garage. Again, April 2019, so you can correspond to the videos. The shirt looks the same too, by the way. I want to discuss with you, again, bringing power to a detached garage. This house I've been doing, you've been following me all through winter. I've done a lot of describing on this house with arc faults to you name it, how to lay it out. Um, with this is a three-car garage, and I'm going to explain to you a few things I chose to do. Now, if you're going to get a price on a garage, keep in mind, it's cheap as possible. It only requires, it doesn't matter if it's a, um, a three, four, five car garage. It really just means that there's only a couple lights on the inside, one light for the man door and one light when you go out and that's it. And then you have one uh, electrical GFCI duplex receptacle back there in the back and then maybe two for your uh, garage door openers. It's as bare bones as it gets. And so that's a really competitive bid no matter what, you're dragging power to the to the detached garage, right? And so you're probably going to go underground because most of our jurisdictions do not allow overhead anymore uh, because of just the eyesight of how it looks. So if you're bringing power underground to your garage, why not pull adequate power? And Well, I'm never really going to use it, right? But when you go to sell it, the next guy buying it might look at that. Understand there's a lot of handyman mechanics and also master electricians like me that I totally would look at that. In fact, I've been looking at property up in the mountains and a lot of it's dragged out with just a 20 amp circuit to a detached building, maybe 30 amps at 240 volt. That's not enough power for anything. So again, this guy basically hired us. It's a custom garage. It's been a custom home the whole way. He's gone to the tilt. I love this type of customer. He's gone everything and said, whatever the code is, increase it by more safety. Whatever it is allows minimum, let's maximize that. And I really like that. Not that it's just because you get to get more money out of the job. It's more or less because it's is a perfect opportunity to explain to you that if I'm wearing a detached garage for myself, I would do nothing less than I just did. So. Pay attention, um, right here, this is gonna be a wall here for him, a man door. He wanted in a fourplex outlet. I think that's a great idea. I put it further up, up to the nose of the car in case the cars are never here, but he creates a workbench. This door will open and not be hidden, and then he's got a fourplex here. That feeds to an outlet on that side. I did an outlet on outside of each side of the garage, front, side, side, and back. I think that's really smart, actually. So the other thing right here, we came in, and here's on the same circuit, going to be circuit B. We'll start a GFCI here, duplex, 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 duplex. Mind you, outside, it has to be weatherproof or rated, and you have to have your hard, extra hard-duty bell cover. Cut those in really nice, got that done. Up here, we're leaving that loose because they're going to put a square block around that uh, for their coach lights. Right here, we could create a three-way here to here. Nowhere in the code does it state I have to do that. He didn't care for that. So what I did do for him instead is I gave him an extra switch leg and put up an LED right along his area because this is going to be his workbench. He doesn't have very deep trucks. He's just got smaller cars. So that'll be a nice switchable thing there. Here's a switch for the outside. I already explained that in my other video on um, how to do that, 210.G and also um, 210.70. This right here is just going to be switchable lights. Now we're going to put in a 1x4 vapor tight LED light. And uh, why did I put a box? Just because in case he changes his mind, I like to box all my stuff. Um, so we'll put in basically four LEDs. This is a three car bay. I do have an outlet per bay. This is a set a different circuit. So that's a circuit on that corner. This is now a circuit to this corner right here. I did decide to ride my, uh, run myself a 1222 and split up that circuit. I could have done a 123 and shared the tandem on the breaker, but I didn't want it. So I just like running that 122, keep my neutral separate. Why do we keep my neutral separate? Because let's say he turns in to be a wood shop hobby guy, right? Well, I don't want to share my neutral with that area. Neutrals get too much uh, work, especially if you're dealing with um, a wood shop. If he's got a dust collector in that corner, it's a perfect spot and he's running that full time. We don't want the new neutral running over here when he's doing a planer or, you know, maybe he's just cutting some wood or whatever. Maybe he's got his refrigerator running over here consistently. We don't want to share that neutral. That's just my opinion. So right here coming up, this comes over to here, goes into my home run and my panel. But I have another circuit that comes out of here, okay? And that's going to come out right here and go into my GFCI. Here's where I'm starting my GFCI for outside. This is my third 20 amp circuit and it serves 
of this outlet right here. He's putting a box right here that's going to control for his cameras and a little station. And we're going to run that Cat 5. And uh, right here, he wants to put his monitor if he's going to have one or he's just going to have an electrical hookup. So we decided to give him an outlet there at 80 inches to keep the kids out of it. And then right over here, we're jumping over to here. And we're running power into this plug. So if she needs a vacuum or she can plug in her electric car from the backside, again, it'll trickle charge at only 120 volt. Then right here, this is a metal box, four square with a bracket hook and a ground. We had to extend it with an extension single gang mud ring. It was pretty deep, about three inches. And then we had them build this around this. So that way um, we can actually still access this. They can get it undone and open it up. It is an in-use cover, so the cord can be used. They said they wanted that just for Christmas stuff or a power washer, whatever. So I have a circuit here. I have a circuit there and I have a circuit there and it serves the outside separately. A lot of guys that are electricians will run and I don't know why they do this. It seems like they waste wire in my opinion, but they'll take a GFI and separate outside from inside and they'll jump that thing all the way around four times and do one GFCI. I don't really see how that helps the customer if they have a couple things going outside. Maybe he's mulching his grass and he's using an electric lawnmower and his wife is using an electric weed eater and someone's doing a power washer. I literally have three separate circuits now for the outside and three for the inside and designated them separate areas. That's always how I would do that. Okay, so then we do have our lights up here. I already showed you that. Now, as far as the requirement with Boulder, they want to the max ability of having an evil car. This is a six gauge. Could I have done a TCP or TC cable? Sure, a tray cable, it could have done it definitely up to a number two number one, whatever, to 100 amps, yes, I could. But the bottom line is this is 60 amps at number six gauge, and that should be definitely adequate enough for what they want to do. We could put it on 50 amps, but normally at 60, it doesn't hurt much either. So point is, is coming into here. We, I did decide to protect all of this with ENT pipe, okay? It's an article, I think 356, if I'm not mistaken, or 362, one of them. But the ENT pipe, the reason why I do that is because anything less than eight foot below the code does have a point that if you have your wire to the side of the stud and you're not going to finish drywall, you're not allowed to go perpendicular through the studs. If you're going to bat it with insulation and drywall it, then you can go havoc and go run and drill it low. We had to pull everything high with these uh, nine and a half foot ceilings. So basically, I use ENT pipe when I'm chest below to protect everything. Uh, for one reason, mice. For a second reason, kids and a third reason people set, tend to store stuff and hit wires this right here is really tight going into the panel over here i decided to run a sprinklers for these guys they had it outside it looked like really like a bunch of crap <laughs> so i decided to get that really nice and run it up for him gave him an outlet here to serve his sprinkler clock again this is my evolt car 240 volt 50 amp to meet their standard then right down here i used my j hooks just to attach to hold that ent in place and guess what that says? UFER, U-F-E-R, and a date. This I actually ran, and it goes down that way, and all the way over past that, my stand's over there. I had more than 20 foot of a number four bare solid copper attached with the acetic, uh, acet, oh, excuse me so much, um, acidic uh, clamps, so that way it won't erode, well, supposedly, but it, it probably still could. So anyways, I've got that stubbed up, and that comes over to here, into my panel. So here's my number four. You have to float the neutral in the ground, but you also have to have, well, a lot of people argue and say you don't have to have a ground rod. In our class we just took, it still states in part of the 250 that it says in 250 50, if, if there's anything available besides just the UFER, you should try to use all grounding electrodes building steel okay if it's a pole barn it's different they don't really expect you on you for on a pole barn i think you could but that's up to the jurisdiction uh if i was the inspector i yeah definitely you could treat it like a pylon uh, for a light pole and still run it down and get it inspected before it's poured and run that up over to the disconnect at the first closest point so you can see my ufer came out right here 
and it goes right up here tucked in and then my number six right there and um, the code basically says that anything less than a number six has to be protected in conduit so six and number four does not it can be exposed this is my inner system bonding bridge bar why did i do that on a detached garage because he's running cameras here okay so i still have to have that and here's my outlet on this side i served my gfi will serve here and trip for that way and I use standard breakers. Arc faults are not required yet in the de uh, garages, detached or attached. I think that's a disagreement. I think that, that there's a lot of machinery out in garages that could arc. And I think 210.12 should be updated for all garages to be arc faulted as well. Just my opinion. Um, anyways, so right here I ran in, I put in a number two inch with my slip conduit, meets article 300.5, my LBs, my PVC. And basically this conduit here is my three way I'm about to wire that goes from here to here. It goes over to there. Do you see that conduit, that ugly looking conduit? Please don't criticize me on the video about that conduit. They decided to pour that and then tell me later, months later, oh, by the way, we'd like to three-way it. We could just probably use a Pico Switch Lutron, some kind of device that RFs between the buildings. They're not too far apart, but some of the issues I've had with some of the wireless um, switch systems is they can have some phantoms once in a while. And so um, I just think hardwired is a little more reliable, but if it's this far apart, it's 20 foot, I think you could still get away with it and do it if you don't have it in already. But we had all of this opened up if you saw my other videos. So we definitely put the conduit and said, let's just do it that way. Otherwise I definitely would have preferred to have that up into the footer. The reason why we have this on the outside, a lot of you guys are gonna say, if this was a brand new pour, why didn't you stub it up inside? I definitely agree with you with the two by six wall, I would have loved to. But we have this little retarded thing in Colorado. Basically, it states that all uh, structures could be shed, fire pump house, pond pump house, um, detached garage, mother-in-law suite. Anything that is a separate structure from on the same property has to have its disconnect outside now. So some cities would say, yeah, we don't really care. Well, Josh, there's the disconnect right there. I'll look over there. It's within sight, within 50 foot, it doesn't matter. This is true, but you have to think like a fire department who comes and the building's on fire and they just want to hit a quick disconnect. That's what that's for. Keep in mind, if you're going to stab your breaker rather than use the top lugs, and by the way, the panel is off right now, so don't worry about my hands. We used an MBR1 clip and we did tell the inspector just by writing it in that it's already in there and it clips in. The MBR2 shows on the Siemens out here, but you do have to have a clip to hold and retain that as your main breaker. And this is an 816 panel, so I can quad this up all the hell I want and put as many as I want. I could put in one more, two, three, four more circuits right here. I could take this off if I decided to main lug this, and now I've created four more circuits here. I basically have four to eight more circuits in this panel. A lot of you say, oh, that's not enough space. Yeah, without the arc faults, I don't have to. And the full GFCI breakers, I don't have to. It can be anywhere on the building as a device. So kind of keep in mind that 210.8 basically states that you have to have a GFCI protection. This is true, but a lot of people get that so screwed up when they call me when they're trying to sell their home or buy a home and they start quoting code like a bunch of morons. You know, the bottom line is, is read 210.8, okay? Because the GFCI protection is so much further than you think. It's not just an outlet near the kitchen sink. It's not just an outlet serving every outlet of a receptacle. It is an outlet of power, but you could still serve an outlet of a light fixture with a GFCI protection because a light fixture or an exhaust fan is too close to the shower. And I've had inspectors make me change that and put a breaker involved or a faceless GFCI inside of the, um, the, the master's closet that's walk-in next to the bathroom. So keep in mind that uh, 210.8 is a lot of uh, reading and, it, and you have to understand how that works. But the other side of it is um, they just changed this in 2020. They're, they're, they're deba debating to say that they're going to make a 240 volt breaker, 30 amp for a dryer, okay, have to be GFCI'd if it's in a basement. So what if it's in a basement on carpet? I, I, I asked the question. What if it's in a garage that's heated like I've seen in Fort Collins? So it's, it's amazing that it's not really specifying that it's cement or above ground, it's just if it's below ground, whether it's finished or unfinished. And what if it's a stack that's 40, 50 amp or a washer dryer stack that's separate? And I have wired 240 volt uh, washers as well in residential. So anyways, guys, that's kind of a little bit more about GFI, but so this is how it all stubbed up. This is my low voltage line that we're gonna pull our CAT6 from over to that box you can see open. That goes into the crawl space. This will then jump over for his cameras. 
Okay, so then a lot of this I stubbed in right here and just used a one inch PVC push in. Um, kind of like a, it's kind of like an MA, but you just slide it in and it's good to go because it's just a bushing between here and the wall. And um, I'll cut these guys in. This is gonna be my, uh, oh, my three-way wire coming into here to serve. This comes around and goes up to here. And this comes into this switch so I can now turn on this light and those four, those three, so four lights with those two right there. So I have a total now of six lights that will turn on at the flick of this switch or that switch when you walk in the door. Again, that is not code. You do not have to do that. It does cost a quite a bit more to do that, but when the ground's already open, then it's still, you know, it, it was still feasible, but it costs more time and material to do that. But keeping in mind, if you are doing that, this is arc faulted. And I have to keep my neutral separated from this side over here on this circuit. So this circuit is right here is doing my LED lights. Now, a lot of things that I do like to use a little bit of trick wiring, but I like to put up some keylesses up above and run a 14.3 instead, come down with the 14.2, and I can literally pull that as a pull chain, or I'm gonna actually switch these LEDs with those two keylesses to light up the up above, because he says he's gonna put a couple planks up there and just put some Christmas stuff. So I lit all of that all at once. Um, oh, and one other thing. This is going to be, quote unquote, my RV plug. A lot of you guys who have gyms and have heaters in your garage, I call it my RV plug. Because you're not supposed to heat a garage, especially if the foundation isn't a true foundation at about that four foot level with its true footer. And that the uh, cement floor has to be, I think it's six inches. And I could be wrong on that. But that way there's not cracking and settling based on the heat inside. But again, if your garage isn't, being, isn't gonna be insulated and drywalled, then they don't allow you in most cities to even heat it or counties because of energy efficient. So this is truly my RV outlet or my kiln outlet, but it could be used for a 5KW heater as well, if you get my drift. So anyway, so this is what the customer requested of us. This is how we wired everything all the way around. We'll get our cameras in for him here soon. He's gonna wire those up for us because he wants to. Um, normally, I just use the wireless ring system. I really like those. I have that in my house and I just have outlet stub. And again, you could take out these coach lights, turn that into a constant power and have four coach lights out that way and one outside and one out back. The only thing I tried to talk him into was doing a, a coach light up high, excuse me, a flood like a ring on that side so she could have a camera. but. He, he didn't really want him. So again, real quick, here's the view of what was done. If you remember this job, I wired up this uh, septic system right here. I had my temp power back there, still got a pole. And all that came up over here, my control box, back of the house. We wired up his irrigation system. I did a video on that over there. And then, um, which is also his um, his sump pumps too from, from all of his preliminary draining. And then right in here, the AC and the panel. So you, if you remember all this ripped out, I don't normally get to show you a video of all of it getting done, but this is looking really nice. And um, yeah, it's been an awesome project. It's gone a little long. It started last August in 2018, definitely not by my taste, but um, this, this, the county had a really hard time with this building structure being this size and they didn't want to pass it. So it made a lot of things difficult, um, but a lot of things were planned out. We definitely did a few things that were kind of what you call a, a, a save my ass uh, uh, things that I did that I always practiced, such as running a two inch PVC between the garage and the house. So I could pull in a number two aluminum URD. Uh, that did save my ass, especially because of this, te this new Tesla cars. Um, and then the other thing we ran is an extra 6.3 over uh, for a hot tub right over here. Uh, disconnected that and just put it in there. And then we also ran another 6.3 underneath the range, which protected me because later on I also had another save my ass circuit there. Um, I had never wired up, I tell two months ago, a 240 volt uh, 50 amp rated microwave first time i've done the 240 volt 20 amp but never a 50 amp so i did have that in the location drill the cabinet so again when you're when you're wiring a house guys don't do just bare minimum try to do the extra things that make sense to protect the customer because again you're the end user 
Uh, he's the end user and you're the end person to get the complaint, not the city, not the county. Again, the code is very vague. I do not think that um, 220.42 has enough implementation, implications to protect the customer uh, with three volt amperes per square foot. I truly think it should be five or six, um, but that's just kind of how it is. But some counties and cities do say um, we're going to have no more than 10 outlet or receptacles per circuit. Keep in mind, switches do not consume power. They just let it through. Lights do. So anyways, guys, sorry the video is long. I hope this helped you out a little bit to understand how to wire a detached garage.